Okay, welcome. Uh, my name is Art Klugo, and I am the chair of the South Burlington Master Planning and Visioning Task Force, which was uh, put together by our steering committee, which is the city council and school board. So welcome. Uh, the turnout tonight is just fabulous. I think we had hoped for about 150, and it looks like we've certainly exceeded that, which is great because this is really your meeting. Uh, the, the night is yours, and the more feedback we get from the community, the much better this process will be, the much more informative this process will be. Uh, those that have known me from my past life know that I like quotes and vision, and uh, this is a quote that was uh, given to us by either Kevin Dorn or David Young. I'm not sure, but it was uh, mentioned very early on in our process working together, and I thought how appropriate to put it up there tonight as we come together as a community, not just uh, from the school side and not just from the city side, but really both. So here we go. Uh, we just wrapped up the meet and greet. Uh, what we're going to do for a, a few minutes is I'm going to share a little bit about the task force, roll into a presentation that right now shows us wrapping up at 745. We are going to try to cut that down. Ideally, we have our portion of the presentation wrapped up by 730 and we have you all move to your tables, being able to work on the big deal, which is really what tonight is about. It, it's getting your feedback on some of the work that was done, hearing what your thoughts are relative to that work, and offering up new concepts, new ideas about things that maybe have not been considered and that we do need to consider in the work that we do going forward. The big deal will be facilitated by Paula Cope and her team, and then after that, we'll have a couple of closing remarks and um, come back together and see where we landed. So as I mentioned, the steering committee is put together uh, by the school board and the uh, city council. And if we might uh, ask the city council and school board members in attendance to stand, be recognized, please. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Visioning processes are, are, are never easy. easy. There's always folks that, that come at it from different ends of the spectrum and how we meet in the middle sometimes is, is truly amazing. And just the fact that they were willing to put us together, the task force, to be able to help uh, resolve and talk about and bring these concepts to you all, uh, it, they should be uh, complimented for doing that. The task force, task force, uh, there's 13 of us. We've been meeting regularly since November. Somebody calculated that we've met for roughly 600 hours. I think that uh, might be close, but it certainly doesn't represent all the work that happens outside of the task force. Uh, we have a very diversified task force. We have business owners and parents and educators. We have retired superintendents and retired city managers. It, it's about as diverse as we can get without involving the entire community. Um, I'd read all their names off, but uh, you'll meet them tonight. If they would, just stand real quick so you can recognize them. <laughs> and while we, <laughs> you, you see the work that we do in the paper, but you don't ever see these folks that help us out. And we shouldn't, uh, we'd be remiss tonight if we didn't recognize Paula Cope and her team, Frank Locker and his team, um, the McGibbon Group for their demographics, and then also Doran Whittier, who has provided uh, tremendous service to this as well. Uh, behind these guys even are other staff at the city that have really supported us. Uh, John Stewart, Annette Harton, and uh, Cindy Weed, most notably, and, and then the folks who ever are helping them. So um, it's a big team. There's been a lot of work that's been done. It's not just the task force that's been doing the work. There's so many more people involved. But what are we trying to do tonight? Really, it's just these three simple things. We'd like to share our work. Most importantly, we want to get your thoughts and understand your priorities as a community relative to the city and to the school. Uh, what we're not going to do tonight is we're not going to be voting on any particular concept or any particular issue. It really is a community input opportunity. Uh, the voting process happens much later down the line. Tonight it's about concepts, ideas, how you see this community coming together over the next 5, 10, 15, 
25, 50 years. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure whether I should address this, but I'm going to. Uh, some people have seen a post in the front porch forum from a, a developer that had said that tonight's meeting we would be uh, giving you ideas or, or solutions on how you get a school for free. Um, hopefully we've all been around long enough to know there's nothing for free, <laughs> let alone a school. Uh, so that is not something that we're looking at tonight. We're not tackling that at all. Uh, that is something that happens much further down the line. So if the expectation is that we're going to vote on issues tonight, it just asks that you um, kind of temper those expectations, put them on the shelf, we'll come back to them in a couple of months, probably, maybe four or five months, whatever the schedule ends up being. And tonight, focus on concepts and ideas. I think I got here pretty quick. Kevin's up, Kevin Dorn, right. city manager. <laughs> Thank you, Thanks, Art. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, the real uh, community and city vision is really held by our elected representatives, our, our uh, city council members. Uh, but they have set your city staff on a course that I want to talk very briefly about tonight. Um, in our office, we talk about South Burlington being a complete city. So what does that mean for us? That means an engaged population. I mean, look around. What a great asset. The most important asset to any community are the people who live there. But great schools, great employers and great jobs, a great infrastructure. You know, all across the board in South Burlington, we have all these things that make this a truly great community. What we don't have is a downtown. And so many years ago, uh, the city councils years ago set us on a course toward working toward be having, becoming uh, having our own uh, city center, our own downtown for South Burlington. So tonight, the component of our discussion tonight that is really around the city side of this is mostly focused on city center. How do we make city center a reality? So when we talk about city center, we talk about the great public facilities that could be there. Dumont Park currently under design uh, and engineering um, on the south side of city center. Uh, Market Street, almost completely designed now. We hope to go to construction on Market Street next summer. We hope. That's the schedule. Garden Street is under design right now. That's the street that runs from uh, Pier 1 over to Midas Drive, under design work right now. So the public facilities could also include potentially a library in our downtown, something that many people in the community have wanted for many, many years. Potentially a city hall, a recreational facility. So many very uh, public amenities that could be built in your downtown. Uh, we're going to need many transportation improvements. We're going to have to deal with transit issues in the downtown. We're going to have to deal with parking, about creative ways to deal with traffic flowing through our community. We want a mixed use environment in your downtown. We want not only retail businesses to be there, but office and housing. And we want housing that is affordable for people in our community. We're really looking for a more urban feel, the transition away from a suburban feel to a more urban setting with high density. We need that high density to relieve pressure on our open space. Many people, many in the community value open space. They value the agriculture that we still have in the community. By creating high density in your downtown, you're able to take pressure off of uh, the areas that you want to preserve as open space. We want to create economic and job opportunities. We want to drive great jobs to South Burlington so that the young people coming out of David schools have great jobs that they can go to and they don't have to move away. They stay right here in this community and raise families and build the economy for generations to come. And we want to be able to get to a discussion, and that may happen tonight, and you'll see it at your tables, around if facilities are changed, if the purpose is changed in some of our facilities, what does that look like? How do you reprogram those facilities to keep them being active in important components of the community? So that's kind of the overall city vision. It's not to say that there aren't some other great things going on in South Burlington. New employers coming here, potential for, for many hundreds of 
new houses and commercial um, development on the O'Brien farm. We have the opportunity to bring in uh, more jobs with the decision by the University of Vermont Medical Center to uh, purchase Tilly Drive and expand there. Great medical and health related jobs for our kids and for our people into the future. So there's a lot of opportunities. We share a vision with our great partners and great friends at the school district. This is the city school partnership, the city school planning process. And with that, I would turn it over to my colleague, David Young, superintendent. So thank you, Kevin, and um, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, this is, again, uh, really important to us on the school side, and as Kevin said, uh, eloquently around uh, a complete city. Um, for us on the school side, our desire is to ensure that all kids progress through our system, ready and eager to learn, and are ready for those next steps, what, whatever they might be, on to college, on to professions, and again, as Kevin said, complete city where they can come back and they can be employed here. They can start a family, they can buy a house, and they can continue to remain here in a vibrant community that continues to allow them to, to prosper. So for us, instead of, and again, I give credit to the board and, and our, the school board and the city council, where we together are wanting your input. We do not want to do this in a silo. We want to ensure that we're getting your feedback on the school side that is in concert with the city side. We want to ensure that we don't make decisions that we say later, wow, we should have thought about that. Maybe those spaces could have been used for some city-related spaces. So again, there's been some immense amount of energy and time on the part of the task force that you're going to have the chance to engage in tonight to give us that critical feedback. And it is that that I think that is so critical for us as a city to continue to be what we say in our schools to continuing to have a proud tradition. We know that this balance of good schools, good homes, good opportunities in the city is really the, the, the backbone of what we know as a healthy city. So on behalf of the school, all of my administrators, the school board, we so welcome you here to help us to ensure that we keep this balance right. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin and David. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items as we get into the task force portion of the presentation. There's going to be a lot of questions tonight, no doubt. Uh, as we talked about earlier, there's been many hours that sit behind the information that you're going to see. There's no way for us to condense that down into 30 minutes. Uh, when you get onto your tables, you'll have uh, cards, index cards, where you can write questions. There'll be some information provided at the end of the presentation where you can log on, and there's a suggestion box. There'll be a community survey that'll follow. There's other vehicles that we want you to use to reach out and ask the questions. We want to move through the presentation crisply so that we can get you to the tables. Um, we're, we talked about the Saxon Partners a little bit in the beginning. That's going to be the end of it. We're not voting on whether we're going to sell Rick Marcotte Central School or we're not going to vote on which properties may get used or won't get used. None of that is part of tonight's presentation. So again, if you're expecting that, um, I apologize for disappointing you, but it will be an opportunity in the future. Um, and I think that's it. So with that, here's where we're at. Right? This wasn't easy. This was an opportunity, though. And it's the same thing that's presented in front of us. There's a lot of work that we're going to need to do. But in that work, this is where we can land. As a community, we're going to find a way to come together. Uh, you'll hear from some other folks tonight on, on where those opportunities lie. So as you hear this information, as you think about what South Burlington could, could be, as Kevin explained and, and David explained in, this, in their visions, think about how we get to these places as a community rather than rather than living in our own particular interests. How, how do we get to the moon? How do we build the bridge? That's fascinating. That's the opportunity that we have here tonight and going forward. So what we'd like to share, uh, let's see, what our task was, uh, where we started, what we've learned, what we've worked on, what we still have left to do, 
and then get you to, again, hear your thoughts. The feedback is vital for us to be able to continue. The, the vision or the task is really simply to understand the current visions, goals, and needs of the city, the district, and the community over the next 50 years. And man, that sounds like a long time. This building is over 50 years old. The three elementary schools are over 50 years old. The high school is over 50 years old. 50 years goes really fast. So while 50 years sounds like a big number, and we're looking at five or 10 year capital plans, how do we make ourselves sustainable and flexible for the next 50 years? Understand where these visions complement and conflict with each other. There's compromises all the time. Uh, this, the discussions within the task force have been robust. Uh, been a lot of energy, been a lot of back and forth. But that's part of this process and we're hoping that that fills out into the community as well when you're at each of your tables. And then ultimately we'll make recommendations to the steering committee, which again is the city council and, and the school board. The task force itself will not bring anything to vote. That's for the community. That's ultimately what will get put on a ballot at some point in the future. So where, so where do we start? We went back to the 2008 City Envisioning Master Plan. There was an overview that was given to us. There's a lot of detail that was embedded in that. Uh, our work, while it may look as though we picked up from where that left off, really we started um, not at square one, but we asked for more information than maybe what was included in that, only because it wasn't available at that time. Uh, the demographic study, which was done in 2014, the education, visioning, and, and master planning, uh, school facility assessments, which were completed last year by the, the principals and other educators. The stewardship planning. Uh, when we talk about costs, and there'll be more detail in a future meeting, but we're going to talk rough order of magnitude, we all need to understand that there is cost to keep the schools, even the 50-year-old schools, operating. That we'll be asked to vote sometime in the future on, on what we need those costs to be, whether it's the elevator that's currently been bonded for, or some of the other stewardship programs that are in place. So keeping these schools up and operational, as great as they are, there are some costs associated with that. And that's what's represented there. And then the Saxon Partners proposal uh, as well. Where did that get us? We divided this into three separate groups, the city, the education, and the community group. These are the basis for the concepts that you're presented. We're not going to go through each one of these. Just un You'll get more detail in your individual tables. They'll be on the cards in one form or another. Um, but out of all that information, we understood better what the city center vision was, TIF fun uh, financing, what the potential multi-generation -gener opportunities are here. Community's getting older. Um, we have one senior room right now. I think it's in the city hall. If, our, if we want to stay here and have an active, diverse community, we need to find ways of providing spaces where we can be active and diverse as we age. Education. Schools are great. Teachers are great. Times are changing. The challenges our students have today and the problems they're going to solve are not the problems that we even know about. How do we provide them a space where they can go about doing that? We looked at the organization of the schools, the adaptability of the schools. If at your table you decide that Maybe we don't need three schools. We only need two elementary schools. What happens with that third school? You'll have an opportunity to answer the, some of those questions or provide that feedback to us. There's a whole host of things that we could repurpose some of our existing schools for where the community actually benefits and doesn't lose from that repurposing. On the community side, we looked at growth patterns and open space protection, what the current tax levels are. This is a great community. Our bond debt is really low. We, our, our administrators have done a fantastic job keeping us in a responsible position where we can actually have these conversations about do we build a school or not? Some communities don't have that opportunity. This is awesome. So when we look at schools in development, and this might be tough to see in the back, and, and so we apologize. The orange circles represent development that's been permitted. Either South Village, uh, Spear Meadows, the O'Brien Farms, which is in the process of being permitted, the Rye development, um, and there's some smaller stuff in there. And City Center, the big one in the orange towards, towards the top. So here's City Center. 
here's South Village, here's O'Brien Farms, here's the Rye Development, there's Spear Meadows, and then there's some smaller stuff down here around Dorset Farms. You can see where the majority of the growth right now sits outside of where our schools are. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's just a thing. We're going to look to the community to tell us how you, how you see this. This is just a piece of information that we're offering up. Same thing with our, our civic buildings. Our civic buildings are difficult to get at. They're old. They're dated. If we're going to talk about a new downtown and a vibrant community and what the community looks like going forward for 50 years from now, is this really where we want to be? Do we have another vision for ourselves? Demographics plays a tremendous role in what you're about to undertake in, 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 at the tables. Uh, we know from the demographer that 10 years ago, there were almost two and a half people per household. Today, there's roughly 2.2 people per household. What does that mean? That means that there's a reduction in the student enrollment. And Abby's going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. We know that our population is increasing. We know that we're getting older. And, and some people may think that we solve the school problem by building more homes. And unfortunately, that's not the case. When you build a home, you get the one-time bump when that house is built. A family with two children moves in. But how long do they live in that home? What happens with the families that want to move in and can't because we're living longer in the housing stock that we have, and that when they do move in, they have two children or one child instead of three or four. We know that women are having fewer and fewer children. 33% of the women do not give birth to a child versus 1950 when it was 14%. And this is what we learned from the demographer. So it's changing how many babies are actually being born. We know that single f or, uh, the single household is increasing. Roughly 33% of all the households in South Burlington are one-person household. How do we generate the students we need to support the schools that we have? How do we generate the jobs that we need to support the aging? How do we, there's a lot of questions that you're going to be able to tackle at your table as you look through the concepts that will be presented. Abby? So um, I'm Abby Crocker, for those of you who don't know. I'll, I'll come over to the microphone, even though I'm very loud. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I've also had the pleasure of being on the task force since November, and um, it's, it's very daunting to try to communicate this information in a succinct way tonight. And so I'm going to pick and choose what I talk about right now, the things that, that might you know, come up as most important for a lot of folks that are here tonight. Um, the, dem the demographer's report that we were given um, also projected what we were looking at in the future, which is one of the big things we've thought about when trying to plan our facilities moving forward. And what the demographer said was, Actually, the number of kids going to be in our school, the raw numbers, is going to be less um, in, the, in the year 2024 than it is today. And so the idea is, well, how much less? Well, today our current enrollments are at about 2,300 total. In 2024, the actual raw enrollments will be around 2,240. So we're looking at a drop in raw numbers about 90. So, so that sort of puts that demographer's report in, in perspective. So what else does that mean? Um, well, let's look at the schools we have today right now. So right now we have three elementary schools, um, one middle school and one high school. And each of the schools is about the same size in terms of square feet. Um, they're all pretty old. And, but where the actual kids are going, uh, the numbers vary depending on the school. And I know you can't see it. So just know that today um, at Chamberlain there's about 226 students, which is less than at the other two schools, Orchard and Central, and I'm talking about elementary schools, which are both around 360. Um, so that's our, our three elementary schools. And, you know, difference in raw numbers is, is, presents different challenges at the different schools. Um, it also presents different opportunities at the different schools. So if we look at ahead, you know, when we think about our schools today, you know, I love our schools today. Most of us love our schools today. A lot of us move to South Burlington because of these schools. And as we're sitting here in the task force, you know, since November, going through all of, you know, all of this material, um, you know, it, 
it's hard for a lot of us to absorb. You know, we want to look ahead 50 years, but at the same time, we're the ones living it right now. So balancing those two things has been, been challenging. But it's a challenge for us, and it's also a challenge for you that we're hoping you sort of experience that tonight at the tables. Um, these are two things that I pulled out of the other paper in the, in, within the past month. And right now, our schools not only are awesome, our kids are doing great, but they're actually really well maintained. So they might be old, but because of a really well planned stewardship plan, they're in good shape, relatively speaking. The issue is moving forward. So right now, we've got pretty good schools in terms of facilities and amazing schools in terms of the kids and the teachers and the families that are there. Um, but where do we want to spend our money on those schools moving forward? And I don't know. You know, that's what we're all here to talk about tonight is do we want to keep into aging facilities or do we want to use this as an opportunity with some of the other things going on in the city to try to rethink? And that's where we are. So let's keep moving. So when you do have a group of 13 strong-minded people in a room, um, again, our meetings would go for four and a half hours and more. And it's exhausting. Um, but the reason that it keeps going is because we're all very diverse. You know, everybody's diverse, and, and where your priorities lie might be here for you and, and here for somebody else. Everybody's priority is important. Um, everybody's priority needs to be heard, but we need to take the difficult task of, of seeing where they overlap and, and how we can work together. And so that being said, these are the kinds of considerations that we were thinking about when we were trying to say, well, we need to get community input. We know we're not moving forward anymore as a task force. We have our opinions. We have our views. We need to hear from the community. So what are we thinking about? Well, the kinds of things we thought about is, yeah, we do want strong schools. That's, that is what a lot of South Burlington is known for. That's really important. Um, we need to keep that. That's going to keep our population coming here. We need strong schools. Strong city center, like what Kevin said, we don't have a downtown. That would be awesome. So yeah, we want that too. Costs. We don't want it to cost anything. <laughs> you know, like there's all these things we want, and it's hard. We can't have them all. So how do we balance the costs? And one of the things you're not going to see tonight is actual numbers. And the reason is we spend a lot of time. You know, John was great about giving us a lot of numbers, um, but every time you change one little aspect, the whole cost changes. And then poor John would say, "All right, I, I got to go do that again." So you know, we understand that we have some ideas. You know, we understand how much it, it, it impacts a taxpayer if we take out a $10 million bond. We understand what new project costs are, but they're just general ideas. So, so that's, we're not going to focus too much on cost, except knowing everything's going to cost something. Um, the repurposing of assets. So we've talked about that. You know, when we talk about potentially building a new building, that's great. Again, we'd love to all build new buildings, but what do we do with the old building? You know, do we just leave it there? You know, are there opportunities that we can use that old building for something else? And, and what might those old buildings be used for? Um, that sort of ties into the idea of these natural areas and green space. You know, we love our natural areas. You know, that's, a, that's another nice driving thing about South Burlington. If we want to build a new building, where are we going to put it? And so, well, those are the things that the task force hasn't been asked to actually come up with a recommendation on. Those are the things we're talking about. And so when we're, when we're looking at you tonight, you know, when we talk about new buildings, we're asking you to think about it in sort of a, a big picture kind of thing. Um, if you have an opinion on, you know, I love this idea, but I'm really not comfortable if this new building goes here. Or I want this new building, but please be thoughtful about it because I don't want to give up any green space. You know, that's the kind of information that, that you know, writing that down and giving that to us is great. Um, but what we're not going to do is decide, you know, what new buildings are being built and where they're going. Being mindful that, you know, a lot of people have done a lot to conserve natural space, and, and that's awesome and something we all love. Um, when we talk about disruption, we also don't want to be disturbed at all. You know, if we're building a new school and we're moving our kids, that's a big deal. You know, that's their whole entire educational career. So what we have to do when we think about our change is we also have to think about, you know, being mindful of the people living it right now. And if with change, you know, not all change is good and not all change is bad. You know, this is an opportunity for us to evaluate all the things in front of us and figure out what kind of changes are mindful being being considerate of all of these different kinds of things. Um, when we talk about economic development or opportunities and impacts, you know, economic development is us growing as a city, finding new places for jobs. Um, sometimes when we think about schools, schools are a big driver for economic development. People move here for the reasons. If we think about building new schools, you know, it's known that building a new high school is really good. You know, that's a great thing for communities. Um, just strong schools is a good thing, but at the same time, 
being mindful of every one of these things is good. We can't all be mindful of all of them at the same time and prioritize all of them at the same level. So that's where the discussion comes in. Depending on who you're talking to, they're going to say, oh, strong schools is by far the most important thing to me. Or forget schools, let's really focus on a strong city center. And how do we get that conversation to happen together? Um, so that's what us as 13 people have been trying to do. Again, four and a half hours at a time. So it's tricky. So now that's what we're asking you guys to do tonight. So these are the things we were thinking about when we came up with the concepts we're putting forward to you tonight. So again, they're just concepts. And it's the idea of, well, we've got to put a lot of information out there to understand how, as a community, we're feeling. Um, the concepts are clearly are not votes. Um, they're just to give you an idea of what's going on. And so we want feedback from you. So let me give you an example of one of the actual concepts. So future school configuration, an example. Switch to two elementary schools. So everybody has a gut reaction about that, but think about it. You know, our population is going down. You, we have 50-year-old buildings. We're going to have to spend money on them. Where do we want to spend the money? And, and thinking about the idea we could use these buildings for something else, you know, let's be mindful. This is one example. So you're going to see these at your tables. And this is an example here that says, let's go to two elementary schools, and let's put one of them be a K-2 school, K first, second grade. One of them be a three, four, five grade. That's new. You know, that's not what we do right now. And then we'll keep our middle school and our high school. So when you are seeing this at your table, you know, we're going to ask you to prioritize you know, what's, what school concepts you like, these school configurations. Um, if you see this and you like this idea, but you want to see a little change, like, you know what, two elementary schools, I'd rather see it two K-4 elementary schools or two K-5 elementary schools. We want that feedback. So we're asking you to actually take the index cards you're going to have at your table and when you see a card like this, you know, and you want to say, oh, I, I like that, I want to prioritize that, but I want to give this feedback to the committee or I want to see some variant of it, write that down. That's what index cards are for at your table. We want to hear that. Um, thank you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Paula Cope is going to come up here in just a second and talk to you about the big deal, the, uh, the activity that's been planned for tonight. Hopefully, uh, what you've heard so far is uh, an opportunity. I know that there's some skepticism out there that a lot of this has already been canned and we're just having the community meeting to have a community meeting. That, in fact, is, is not the case. An example of that is the uh, developer proposal. That sat in the background for five or six meetings. I don't remember when it exactly came into the discussion, but we intentionally made sure that the developer proposal was not driving the work that we were doing. That this is about the community, not about a developer who made an unsolicited offer to buy a school that's perfectly functioning. So with that, as Paula comes up, keep that as the backdrop to be open-minded in the work that you're about to engage in. Paula. Oh, forgot I'm not 6'4", <laughs> like the rest of you. Hi, everybody. I see a lot of familiar faces here, and I'm really thrilled to be here uh, with um, the COPE team tonight and COPE alumni. And I don't want to forget um, to have you say thank you to Beth Damon, who is our graphic facilitator who's doing an incredible job taking your story and putting it on paper so it can be a living mural to tonight and to the kinds of discussions you're having. I also want to thank uh, UVM. We have six UVM students who you will meet tonight. They're going to be our runners, our helpers, our gophers, our everything. They're helping to create the infrastructure for tonight. An important question for you. How many of you like to play cards? Hold them high. Okay, perfect. That's what we're going to do tonight. So we've designed a card system called the Big Deal. And that card system, uh, as you will soon learn, has three, you're going to play with three different decks of cards. The first deck is going to be considerations, the things that Abby talked about that the task force has really uh, had to consider and really look at in depth. And you'll have a chance to prioritize those with the help of a trained facilitator. The second deck you're going to work with is the concepts deck. So that's some of the stuff that 
um, Abby and Art were showing you with the different ways you could look at schools and different configurations and different possibilities. And the third thing you're going to be able to do is to look at repurposing uh, facilities. And we'll be looking that, at them school by school. And again, you'll be able to set priorities. You're going to do this all while you have fun, which is why this is not your typical community meeting. So we've given you table cards when you came in. And the whole idea is to sit with new people. Sit, don't sit with your spouse. You talk to your spouse all the time. Go get a new idea, a new concept. Go sit somewhere where you can let it all out on the table and go home and not have to keep talking about it. <laughs> right? Right. <clears throat> so the big deal is a community decision-making tool. It is literally different decks of cards that um, we have painstakingly worked on over the last few months that reflect all of the hard work that the task force has sifted through and um, put down on paper. It's intended to help small groups find their voice. So it's really important that the work is happening through your dialogue. So it's through your conversation, through your debate, and your discussion that this evolves. So your facilitator is there to help that happen, but your dialogue is really uh, with each other at the table. You're going to set priorities. And you'll have lots of on-ramps. And by that, what I mean is you'll have the index cards Abby talked about. If you have a question, you can fill out a card. Um, if you need something answered right away, you can, your facilitator can put their hand up and will um, try to get you an answer. But most of those uh, cards that you submit, we're going to take them, gather them, sort them, and put the answers on the website. So we'll make sure that you get answers even if you don't get them all tonight. You'll have another on-ramp and you'll be able to make comments to your facilitator and um, most of your facilitators, many of your facilitators are also task force members. So you'll be able to have some more questions answered that way. I think we have one more slide. What you're going to do after we wrap up this presentation is you're going to take another look at your table number and that's the randomly assigned table you'll go to. If you look at the back of that table number, you'll see that there is a survey link. So another on-ramp is a community survey that we will post to that link. And you'll have another opportunity to give your feedback through that mechanism. There's also an online suggestion box. And you can keep giving us your suggestions that way. Your facilitator is going to guide you through the process. They're going to go through each deck individually, so you'll have plenty of time to do that. And at the end of each round, you'll hear this. Isn't that lovely? Yes. No screaming, shouting, or bullhorns. We'll also be um, recording your uh, priorities. So you'll see your facilitators will have a worksheet. They'll fill out the priorities. You'll have a flip chart page. Your facilitator will take whatever priorities you determine to be the top ones for tonight and put them on there and your um, dedicated UVM students will hang them around. You can do a gallery walk. Your worksheet from your facilitator is going to go to Kate. Kate, can you raise your hand? You're way in the back of the room. Kate's our data dog for the night. And she's working with another student, Spencer, and they are loading the worksheet priorities in in real time. The plan is that before you leave tonight, you'll know what the priorities were of the group. So both for the concepts and for the considerations. So that's our hope. And um, there'll be a wrap up. So when you're done at your table, just hang out for a few minutes and um, we'll try to wrap it up and give you the real time feedback. That's great. Good. Thank you. Got to take my bills thank you, quietly. Thank you, thank you. Yes. OK. All right. All right. So now it is 725. We have, uh, we'll come back together after the big deal. We'll have some ending slides. Which we'll talk about the process as we go forward. We'll recap, come together. So we'll take, uh, what, five minutes to get to your tables and we'll start at 730 prompt with the big deal. Thank you.
second, what is third, and in order to do that, there will be quite a bit of discussion, it will likely be rich discussion, because it will be essentially what is important to you, and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, while we're doing this. So, the first card says, and I'm really going to read that, school district, vision, and aspiration. So, uh, good schools are most important to me. So, this is... Uh, you know, obviously what the task force came up with, and this is what they're talking about. School district, vision and aspirations. Equity across all schools, that refers to resources, programs, and academic standards. Equal opportunity for all K-12 students. Operational efficiencies, high quality facilities, 21st century learning environment. So, Good schools are most important to me. So that's the first card. Um, open space and natural resources, conservation of land, public transportation, bike paths and walking, uh, and walking neighborhoods, expand natural areas, preserve green areas, and again, growth where they focus on natural areas is most important to me. These um, four story structures in Built Woman and Shaw's are. Um, possibly could be an entry level. Uh, we took them down, I don't know how many houses by the airport, and I'm going to call them three bedroom, half and a half branches, just for the sake of argument. But I feel like that piece of food chain has been removed. And once, if you think about a young family just starting out, they may or may not have kids. We don't have single family housing. We don't have enough of it. And I think that if we created a natural food chain of housing, once the kids got to school, they're there because the schools are so good. And I think that we would continue to have schools. But I think the school key component piece of housing is seriously lacking in the city. And I think if we could solve that piece of it, a lot of this other conversation might be a it's, it's, not, it's not important, but I think it would be easier to have. If we had a way to keep people once they got here, starting out, young families, young kids, really a path, a progression path. There are times when we do activities, but it's a huge jump from what we do have at the moment. So I don't think it's affordable housing that we need. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think start it's, it's really in the south. We don't want to get access. We don't have a lot of east and west access. It's interesting. You don't really think about that until you look at a map of the traffic patterns in South Burlington and you realize everything goes this way and not much goes that way. Yeah, exactly. Sheldon Road. Yeah. I mean, it now becomes, it's almost a relic of, of the way that Burlington has developed that's forced it onto us. They have a huge golf course that basically takes all of the east west developments, a road development, away north of Swift Street. And so we're, we're kind of stuck in this, in this piece where we can't get east west because they're, they're, everybody comes around to get east west, but they have to come into South Burlington to get there. It clogs up our streets more. I'm a real big believer in economic development because then that keeps our taxes down and it allows us to do there some no of these there, things. There no okay, so to me, are. I would put this next, then I would put cost containment, meaning that you've got to, you've got to do what we want to do smartly, smartly because we're going to all have to pay for it. I see that. I got to see the eye out of it and I got to look at it for how do I want to see the future? Whether or not I think things are cheaper, whether or not I even want to live in this city. Would I want to live in this city? So I'm just trying to figure something. Get the eye out and see where it goes. 
Yeah. By realizing that this is important, um, also this is important. I mean, I don't know, there's a lot of people that are getting taxed out of our community. We have very high taxes, even with income sens sensitivity. I tell people that live in other parts of the country what they're paying in taxes are like. Well, it's quite remarkable how much that we pay in taxes. And I don't know where the money's going to come from for the, the city center, um, for the new schools. I, I don't well, see where that's going to come from. If we, if we develop the downtown, there would be taxation on purchasing and property owners, and if it's, if sure. it's, if it's residential mm -hmm. in there too, they would be paying residential property taxes. Or there, there is something, and I, I just learned about this in the past month, there's something called the TIP, which is a tax economic funding district. And that's what City Center has been developed in. It's essentially, you know, the cliff note version of it is the state allows a municipality to create a tax incremental district like that, and then the city gets those tax funds for 20 years. They, they can't be used for schools. They cannot be used for schools. They can be used for municipal improvements and municipal buildings, so in other words, libraries, uh, sewer, water, parks, that sort of thing. No, they cannot be used for schools. Right? Yeah. They can, they can, yes, they can be used for that sort of thing. I think we get into this sort of blinders thing where everything we've done before it always has to be like that you know and I look at the high school and, and middle school properties right here do you know how much land there is here do you know how much of that land is covered with parking lots like can't we think outside the box do we really need that much parking you know and can we better utilize the land that we have in this place that we have by, by thinking a little differently about things like that. The buses are never full. There's only a handful of people on the buses, if you've ever noticed. And it, you know, it goes from downtown to the airport and makes a loop and it goes back down to Burlington. So very few people ride the bus. That may be because it doesn't have a loop. The, I think the, the routes are limited for itself. Does anybody have any strong feelings on like what is absolutely not in our top by four here? And, I mean, are we comfortable with cost containments or disruption of change being our least important um, measure? Of I would switch them to. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I have a choice. I, I, I if we're okay. going to go right. forward, yeah. that we right. just have to. <laughs> Deal with this. Right. <laughs> the choices yeah. you'd make would have to be informed by costs, I guess. They mentioned the library before. I don't know if anybody else. I utilize the South Burlington Library. My kids love that little reading corner. I mean, no, I, I use it. I, I use it too. <laughs> but I also it use would, Burlington. <laughs> right. It would be nice to have nicer facilities. Yeah. Yeah. What are people, I mean, being an outsider to South Burlington, and even when I went to high school, I lived out in the island. Um, like, what is, where is the current down? I mean, like, where do people really consider those walking retail hub of the, of the city? There is isn't. There's there Williston really isn't Road, one. Dorset yeah. Street, and Shelburne, Shelburne Road. Yeah. We have three main roads. Yep. Taxes are tough now, and they're going to be tough in 10 years. That's not going to be I agree with that, but I also think when you think about like the possibility of losing Rick Markov, Art mentioned that if you lose, if you buy, if you build a house in this city, you get a bump one time. Right. Same thing happens with Rick Markov. If you sell it, you get a bump once, and then it's gone forever. Yep. I agree. Yeah. My kids went there. I love that school. I, I do too. With all my heart. I love that school. 
love that school. I don't think a school should. You can have a great city, and, and moreover, you'll have a better city center if you do right. have a right. and, and, and whether right. it's that facility or that exact program, but that component. Right. Right. Have a, you're yeah, chair of the absolutely. library board. Yes, I was chair back. Yes. yes. And I was co-chair. <laughs> and he was co-chair. He was <laughs> my co-chair. Vice chair. Um, a lot of, um, lot of library board at this table. No one wants to talk about money, and I know that conceptually I don't understand how this will impact the taxpayer. Well, and so it depends what you do. Right. So, so we'll talk about next, you're going to see like five or six school options. Each one will have a relative cost. I can't help but think it's that hard for me to decide that. Right. Uh, this is not about losing current open space. This is about using taxpayer money, city money to acquire more. Yeah, I mean, we're speaking very conceptually right. about what our priorities are, but I interpret that as saying, you know, not that we're going to get rid of what we have, but are we going to spend new public dollars on additional open space? But for me, thinking of South Burlington as a neighborhood, right. the open space for me is taking a ride to Stocksport or taking a hike somewhere, yeah. you know, or climbing Mount Mansfield. To me, again, the concept becomes bigger. But I think your point is important about controlling costs, and that's what we don't do effectively, in my opinion, when well, it comes to education. On that point, when you talk about a city vision or a downtown, I think of Burlington. I can drive to Burlington almost the exact same amount of time. I'll never be able to walk to this city center. So really, how big a difference is that going to have in my life? For me personally, for me and my family, this is not important. I think it's important to a lot of people, but it's not important to me. Um, for so why do you think it is important to I think the concept is important to other people. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe people who have had true city living before and feel like they don't have some of that here or taste of that here. Well, this isn't just about city staff. We look at mixed housing for affordability, young families, and uh, in place. I mean, that's a very, very important concept. Um, I guess thinking of this, I'm thinking of sort of that downtown strip. I guess I'm associating that with this. Yeah, and to me, that doesn't... Side. that it's doesn't. Just city side. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually starting to... So hard to put a cost on right. anything. Right. Um, this is doing nothing. Because of the age of our facilities, we're looking at needing to do something. So this is a pretty significant jump. Um, you know, we need elevators. We need new. We need new windows. Like so, this idea of doing nothing isn't zero dollars. There's something there. It's not as much as up here, but this may have other economic developments there. So just try to keep costs relative. Um, so this is our first one, maintain existing schools. So we're going through the same process of weighting these things. Exactly. We're going to prioritize these in right. terms of, you might look at one and say, absolutely no way that's off the table. That's brutal. Or you might look at it and be like, this is a good idea, but I want to change this. Or you might look at one and be like, I never thought of that. That's a great thing to do. So that's what the next thing will be. So now we're talking about two elementary schools. Moving these two elementary schools, this card represents one, one existing school remaining. Which of our three, I don't know, um, as a K-2 position. K first and second grades. All kindergartners, first graders and second graders in the whole city go to one school. The other elementary school will be a new building, again, I don't know where, um, grades three, four, and five. Middle school and high school remain as is, just planned and this two of our existing elementary schools to be repurposed for something else. So here's this card. What we're doing is we're playing this game called The Big Deal, and we're, we've already gone through one deck. I'm sorry that you weren't able to participate on that one. We're going to go through the second deck, and this one, so the first deck had to do with concepts that the task force has had to um, sort of wrestle with in trying to make a recommendation for um, 
what we're going to, what we might propose to the council about what to do with schools. So now we're going to talk about some of the, these aren't the only concepts that we're considering, but these are just five. And, and hopefully they represent a broad range of approaches we could take. And so this is where there's going to be a lot of discussion and maybe a lot of, I like that choice, but only if you do it this way, the way Abby was talking about. So I'll, I'll, uh, the way I've been doing this, I'm reading them first, and then we'll have some discussion. The first one is called Maintain All Existing Schools. That means three elementary schools remain with the planned maintenance and compliance uh, requirements only. The high school and the middle school remain with planned maintenance and compliance requirements only. And the maintenance and requirements only means um, you, you can't, you know, we all own houses. You gotta, you gotta make improvements as you go along. And there's regulations that we have to keep up with. Um, and so that's where, this one isn't no money. This is still cost money to do this. But it means there'd be zero existing schools would be repurposed. And there's a little piece on the back here. It's a little bit of a sliding scale in terms of cost. And I think Art mentioned in the presentation, we're not getting into big numbers here. As you can already see from the first time, this first deck, we would be here for a week talking about numbers. Um, but this does give you a relative scale. So this one, of the options, other options, is the least amount of money, at least at the outset. But when you think about some of the other things we've talked about, like city uh, school vision, would this accomplish that? So I'm just going to put that one down. Yep. Can I ask a question uh -huh. on that on that dollar thing? That you yeah. Have? So is that just in the dollars for maintenance and upkeep, or is that That's all the, staff and uh, and all that, all um, expenses of running the school? It's all expenses of running the school. So it's the estimated. Well, so there's some. There's costs of running the schools that are going to be there regardless. Yeah. And so what this means is take that set cost, and this is what it would. This is what where this one comes in terms of okay. projects on top. Okay. And you'll see okay. where this goes when we talk about the, the other ones too. Is that a better way to? Um, so this one is the red card, and this one is two elementary schools with one new build. So that means two elementary schools, one existing school, and we're just proposing that that existing school might be grades K through two, and one new school that might be grades three through five. That means the middle school and the high school remain, and again, the planned maintenance and uh, compliance requirements are, are spent for that. That means we have two existing schools, two buildings, we're not gonna say which ones, because we don't know, that could be repurposed that may need, um, you could do something else with those buildings, and we'll get to that actually in our last deck. And then again, the estimated uh, project cost here is, it's the next one up in the line. So I'll put that one down. Like if we're improving our schools, does it make sense to have two elementary schools? Does that do something for the, um, I don't know, is that an advantage or there, does that allow us to repurpose a building or something? I think if we were considering that, I'd rather see two schools that are K through five than to have them so compartmentalized as K through two and three through five. So I'm not saying if that's the highest priority, but I think I would rank this one too. Yeah. Yeah. This. I would too. We're going to have uh, three that, that means it's going to be new. Well, that's so another good point bill. is that, yeah, it's you know, you're having all, you have to set all your kindergartners. I don't know how long the bus ride is. Those are both tough. I would be very confused about a design that takes an elementary school out of a city center. As opposed to keeping it in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So. And they could easily add a floor, right? Yeah. To right. Combine. But I wouldn't want to do that right now. I would want to wait to see if the schools are going to shrink in them right. first. Like, I don't think that this should be what we should jump to. I think it should be I the think, possibility yeah. if it goes that oh, yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But I think but we're I, all kind of very open yeah. to the idea of, of, going of to consolidating the two schools. If but the, not a new build. Well, oh, yeah, but that's just strange. We can put that in there. Unless it's in the city yeah. center. The one thing I could have concern about is that the 6-8 has little time for identity for a child to identify with a school. It's, 
and just by the very nature of its name, middle or junior high, it gives it gives that uh, a feeling that th I'm just passing it to me. And that's one of the concepts that I don't care about. Again, my, all three of mine, I was a principal in Chittanese before this, and when you did a K, pre K four, it went to a five eight. It worked out pretty well. So I, I, I want to dispel the myth that our eighth graders are going to um, scare or, or harm fifth graders. I just, just uh, I think, I think if the school is put together well, thought out, smart staff, good, good move, that won't happen. <coughs> I think that's going to take a lot of this, convincing this, of parents, I agree. Though. I agree with that. I've heard those communities a lot smaller than what South Burlington is. They are a little bit smaller, yeah. I mean, Williston is smaller than South Okay. And this South is the kind of... The largest cities in the world. I just want to say that this is the kind of data that's missing. 5-8, across the country, 5-8 is very rare. It's not used. There's no movement towards it. There's movement away from it. If you do the research, 5-8 is not something people use. Why is that? The other configuration keeps more kids to go out. I mean, I went to, I went to one of these, but people don't build 5-8s. They don't build them in Vermont. And the last time I looked, there was 12, 12 5-8s in the whole state. So there was one other thing that I was going to... But these guys should have this research. Yeah. It shouldn't just be me. That's what I was getting at before. Right. All of the, yeah, this is one I'd like, one guy I'd like, I'd like I would need to know not a lot more yeah. before yeah. moving past the, what we have now. So uh, The other thing is I'm concerned about, this would be closing two schools. What happens to those? But that's in the next that's round of cards where we can repurpose and say what we would do with those extra buildings. But well, that's well, what would but we they're, do with But them? they're still closing those schools yes. in those neighborhoods. Right. Well, you told me in the which, first which, round which, which, we weren't going to be doing this. And we're already but doing it. What, what they showed on the map was right. that where all the growth is potentially in the city, yeah. the schools aren't anywhere near, near. Where the growth is. So they're not. Yeah, I always get nervous about, about closing a school in a neighborhood because the neighborhood tends to relate to a school. Actually, if you think about it, Rick Marquette Central School really doesn't have a neighborhood around it. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Most kids don't even walk to school. Yeah. Yeah. Chamberlain has some other problems. And so does Chamberlain. Yeah, Chamberlain's like in the middle. Well, the question is how long will the bus rides be? You know, where are these schools? Well, that's the kind of data you need. Not just. They're already long. The, the Chamberlain attendance area goes from Shelburne up to the airport. It's an entire north-south strip. You know, um, the orchard attendance area creeps along and wiggles like an octopus for a while. But because of our traffic patterns, we're going to be busting kids forever. You've got crazy traffic patterns. we got crazy. Our kids are not going to be walking the streets unless they're back in orchard. I don't even know any place else. I'll maybe back over here. Chamberlain's coming, walkers, Chamberlain's coming down. They're not going to have them. Chamberlain, Chamberlain has fewer and fewer walkers. You've got a unique problem. Yeah. 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 Let's do a call. Okay. Let's do a call. 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 let us do a call 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 let us
does it move between all the schools? Is it just whatever? No, they just use a room in a school. I mean, there's no set. In other words, like. Yeah, right, but there's no set thing that's designated as the senior center. They can drop in any time. It's when the room is free that's not being used for something else. It's not a senior center. It's a room they can use. We do not have a senior center, right. And I would think, I mean, Downtown is supposed to have a right. lot of commercials, so don't we want to make sure it's got the senior center and the library and Yeah, it's not yeah. I guess much yeah. but it could Very be presented it hasn't been a week. But see when you talk or. about the tip and stuff, you know, the developers will make money if they build commercial enterprises because they're gonna sell it. You're not gonna make money on this. And this doesn't make money at all. But if we own the land and we own the building, then we're halfway there by using that building for municipal purposes. Because then you have to trust that there's going to be enough money someplace else in city center, which we don't own. That's the, that's the crux. We don't own any of the land in city center. The city does not own it, which means we would have to purchase the land and then put a library or a city hall or a senior center. If you use Rear Park Hot, you already have the land. That's right. And then you could do something with it. The rest of City Center is going to be all this. You know, uh, so this is the cheapest use. solution, too. Yes. Well, but we don't know what you could get for right. because again, it goes back to cost and right. payments. If we can get like a huge chip of change. Well, again, it's been appraised, but we don't know what the number is. But it does make sense if you publish that. Yeah, that, I, don't, I don't know why. Uh, that doesn't make sense either. Appraisals are public record. I mean, I mean, well, I know, well, I, that's I another did. issue. But I, I think you see that. But anyway, I, I just see this as a good solution. One thing I think we should ask out of the committee is, could the appraisals be made um, at least available? You we know. should take the money off. And what, what do you want to see in the center of our city? I what do we that? We certainly definitely yeah. want this. I don't want to be a store. Okay. And yeah. so if this, if this <laughs> helped to guarantee that, yeah, then that, that would be a good thing. Yeah. But only after everything has been, it's, everything's transparent. Yeah, and we no, know yeah, what we're going I get that. But yeah. if that's we're saying it hasn't what you want in your city center, we yeah. need services. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes, that makes right. Sense. This because, is absolutely yeah. crucial. But then well, after that, do you want more of this or one of these? No, we don't want more of this. You can, otherwise we should be a downtown shopping area. There won't be any living. With the, that would fit in yes. the design for yeah. city center. Yes. Yeah. If you want a multi-use where people can live, where they go to school, where they shop, yes. where they work, you just don't want a downtown you shop. Wow. Yeah, no, no, right? Kate has her own mic, and she and Spencer are going to report on the results, and then Art gets the last word. Actually, before Kate and Spencer, as I was walking around the room tonight, I realized that I was remiss in not acknowledging our legislators who are here tonight. Martin Malone, and Hugh, Helen Head, and Peter Townsend. Thank you for coming out and supporting us. It's greatly appreciated. Kate? Um, so we have the results for you. Um, and as we just mentioned, everything is on the wall there on the side. Um, but in terms of considerations, 18 tables, 90% picked school vision. Um, so that's a clear uh, priority for the tables. In terms of school concepts, six tables picked a new card. So we have six new concepts that the task force will get to consider. Um, and then next up was, for first choice, is two elementary schools with one new build. And then third place was a new high school. Um, so those are the general real-time results. We'll post these on the website as well. Thank you. Wow. Up for us. That's awesome. Yes, you should all get a round of applause. That's great. Um, There's a lot of hard work that went into that. The conversation was was awesome, and to be able to come up with six concepts that we did not have in front of you really speaks to the effort tonight. It doesn't make our work any easier, but that's okay. That's what we signed up for. Um, and certainly, that probably is a good place to get into uh, 
into next steps here. So what are we going to do with all of this information from tonight? As Paula said, the uh, facilitators will collect everything, all those graphs and notes, and bring that back to us. So we are scheduled to get back together again on April 6th. Uh, after we get together, or actually while we're getting together, the community survey will be going on. The suggestion box will be open. And please, uh, friends, family, anybody that wasn't here tonight that might be interested in being part of this process, all that information that we can collect from them will be just as valuable as the, the work that you all did here tonight. So let's keep the community part of that process moving. Uh, once we receive all that information, which I think the survey is going to run for two or three weeks, we'll come back together as a group. We'll take a look at all the information, and then we're going to adjust the concepts. They're going to need to be adjusted based on just on the work that was done tonight, let alone the work that's still left to be uh, completed. Once those concepts are revisited and, and, and brought back uh, from the task force, we'll bring it back to you in another community meeting. Ideally, we'll get together again as a community in roughly 30 days, plus or minus. We need to work through the schedule, but if you want to put that on your calendar, and when we come back together, we'll have some costs for you at that time. I know that uh, many of the discussions were around, well, how do we think about where we want to go without having a cost associated with that? And that was intentional because sometimes it's tough to think uh, about vision and, and thinking aspirationally if we're always then kind of hindered by the cost. It's important, it's a consideration, and now, now at the appropriate time it'll come back in and we'll have a chance to look at that piece as well. Uh, so yes, we're gonna present the updates to you. Out of that next community meeting, we'll again, yes ma'am. So the wrap-up was uh, there were six there were six concepts presented that was 30 percent that were not part of the original deal, and then there were six concepts that followed. I don't remember which ones those were. Kate, what was that mentioned? Sam again. So we yeah. voted on the configurations of the buildings and we voted on the zoning. And, and right, that will come. That will come out. At, that will help inform the work that we have to do yet. There was too much information there to compile all of that at once. So we did not give you the results for those. We only gave you the results for the considerations of the school concepts. And those were just for the concepts. I'm sorry. Right. So for the concepts, we had six new ideas. We had 30% that liked the two elementary school, one new build, and then roughly 20% liked the one high school and the rest were fragmented amongst the other concepts. Those were concepts? I thought those were building ones. Those were concepts. Yep, those were concepts. So again, we have a lot of work to do. Thank you for giving that to us. Uh, after we come back to you and get your feedback, we'll go back and we'll tweak those concepts again. One more time before we present our recommendations to the school board and the city council. And at that point, uh, the community process takes over, the task force will bow out, and you get to stay involved, and we get to re-engage as community members and no longer as task force members uh, with them. So with this effort, there's a lot of thanks that, that should go around, certainly, to the school board and the city council for bringing us together. Uh, certainly to the legislators who are here tonight, David and Kevin, Beth, who is creating this wonderful mural over here that I haven't looked at yet tonight. Um, everybody, yes, please go look at it. There's a lot of information there. Um, uh, let's see, David, who, who have I not thanked yet tonight? Uh, the task force members. Uh, no, certainly without their work, uh, we could not be here tonight. And then lastly, all of you. Uh, we're doing this for you. We're just one voice. It's your voice that's going to carry the day. And we look forward to having the feedback that you're going to give us and coming back together again in about 30 days. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, community survey, we don't want to forget about that. Look at the back of your card, please. Uh, as part of this community survey, if you go log on, you, I believe there's a place in there where you can request to get the survey. The survey is not quite ready yet, as 
Paul explained a little earlier, we'll use that to inform the survey questions, the work that you've done tonight. So it'll be a little bit before that comes out, but you can be notified by email or it'll be posted on all of the, the city websites and I'm sure we'll try to do something with the other paper as well. Take your table number home with you. Okay. There you go, thank you.